the, the book itself is actually uh, the second volume in a long-term work that's been uh, part of my professional life for most of my career. The, the first volume, um, Chaucer and the Imagery of Narrative, the first five Canterbury Tales, which wasn't called volume one then because I wasn't sure when volume two or volume three might come along, um, came out in 1984. And, and so it, it's been especially kind of wonderful for me to uh, receive an award for the next big installment. As it turns out, the concluding installment. There won't be more writing on Chaucer. Uh, the two books together are, are pretty substantial. Um, the, they grow out of my interest in the visual arts of the period, uh, which is fully equal to my interest in literature, though I um, taught in an English department, and um, that's always been my kind of primary affiliation. But I long ago learned in my doctoral studies at Oxford, for example, that I could learn so much I really needed to know um, from the visual arts of the period, manuscript illuminations, stained glass, um, wall paintings in churches. They taught me how the medieval audience came equipped with certain kinds of symbolic knowledge, certain kinds of privileged knowledge, such as the stories of scripture, and how they were imagined in that time. Um, and that affected, it seemed to me, uh, inevitably, how they received literature of a secular kind as well as a religious kind. And the Chaucer found ways of building upon that kind of thing he could count on in his audience to varying degrees. Many levels of Chaucer's audience, and he, he disdained none of them, but he obviously was writing um, at highest power, uh, full velocity for, for those best equipped to, to follow him. And, and so I've used my knowledge of, of the visual arts, which was very pleasurable to acquire over many years in medieval churches and medieval manuscript libraries um, to, to, to try and become some sort of medieval audience to Chaucer's own work.
I wish we had more time to talk about this, actually. I hope I get to talk to you tonight, because I have a couple more questions. But um, if you could just speak briefly about, I liked your story about your professor who won the award. If you would give that to us in a little um, video clip, that would be great. With, with great pleasure. Um, when, I, when I learned I had won this award, which was an astonishing moment, I can tell you, um, eventually, within the next day or so, I had discovered on the web a list of past winners. And though I've known some past winners, uh, and indeed count them my friends, I'd never seen a comprehensive list before. So I read down it with a growing uh, alarm at my own unworthiness of being placed in that role, um, until I got to the very bottom, which surprised me in a wholly new way. Uh, the, uh, I became an English major at the University of Wisconsin. Rather to my surprise, I thought I wanted to go into the foreign office. But in my sophomore year, I had a year-long survey of English literature from a very distinguished, aristocratic, uh, Jewish, fiercely intellectual woman called Ruth Wallerstein. And I was so bowled over by her presence, by the elegance of her thought, the passion of her love for literature, that it changed my life. At the end of that year, I decided I was going to become a teacher of English literature. I didn't know if that would be on the high school level or maybe college. I think I thought basically high school will be fine. Um, so I changed my major. I studied with Ruth Wallerstein again in a couple of more specialized courses. Um, she helped me win a Rhodes Scholarship that got me to England, which also changed my life in some wonderful ways. Um, and when I got to the bottom of that list of past winners of the award, whose name should begin it but Ruth Wallerstein. She won the first Christian Gauss Award ever given in 1951. And as it happened, I started studying with her in 1952. Um, so she was my teacher, became my friend, my mentor. and. Uh, it means an enormous amount to me that she has uh, somehow at, stands at the bottom of this beautiful column of uh, lovely books and talented people, and that I've been invited to take a place there. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was great. There were a couple trucks, but I think we'll be able to do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah.